please report at Nicholas de Oreo releasing private DMs and encouraging doxing of a 19 year old girl? Hashtag the platform predators. Yup, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself into this situation. Anybody should be able to ask questions within a line of fucking reason without having to worry about a community with power lumping them in with a hashtag predator fucking hashtag. That's insane. It, there's no reason for it. Here's what it does. It makes your community look like you're trying to shut people up, which makes your community look like you have something to hide. The anti-O community and I, we've, I've been around for a while with some of these people, and we've always been totally perfectly fine, but here's the fucking reality. When you go overboard, you're hurting your own cause. You're hurting the people that you're trying to protect. <sighs> Okay, so this is a video I never expected that I'd have to make. I've defended many creators who have been forced to make one of these videos, and I never thought that I'd be put in a position where I have to make a my side video. My name has been slandered. I've been the recipient of a TOS violating harassment campaign, and I have been misrepresented continuously by a woman named Shiloh, who was heavily involved in the anti-Onision situation. As someone who has been doxxed before and had their own family harassed, as someone who has fought for both Just Destiny, who was doxxed and falsely accused of pedophilia, and creators like Slazo, who were falsely accused of being a rapist, I unfortunately am very familiar with e-celebrities being perfectly fine with lying and slandering people. I'd like to preface this by making it very clear that I am not a supporter of Onision. I have never been a supporter of Onision, and I don't plan to ever be a supporter of Onision. I do understand that both Sarah and Shiloh have gone through traumatic experiences in their lives and or childhoods at the hands of Onision. I have no experience with the hardships that they have faced, and I empathize with them from perspectives that I do have. However, we are not discussing Onision or abuse in this video. In fact, we are talking about something entirely different. This situation begins with an interaction that I had with Sarah on Twitter, where I replied to one of her tweets, and then placed the same tweet verbatim into her direct messages. She had decided to crowdfund for a laptop, which is, by the way, absolutely okay in theory. However, in practice, I noticed there were some parts of the story that just didn't add up to me and made me look into it further. The first thing about this tweet that stuck out to me was the fact that she was claiming that she handed the laptop to the FBI and now wanted to crowdfund for a new one. If you're familiar with this situation at all, you'd know that Chris Hansen and Vincent Nicotra were in possession of this laptop for an extended period of time, and she had only recently gotten it back. It struck me as odd as Sarah didn't seem to need the laptop for months, and now all of a sudden she needed to raise money for it because she she thought she'd be without one, as if she wasn't already. The second thing that came across as a red flag to me was that the transactions were completed on Venmo, rather than a website like GoFundMe. This was a bit sketchy on its own right, because a GoFundMe is an organized form of crowdfunding, where you're required to disclose what you're funding for, and you could see how much people have raised toward a specific goal. If you slap a PayPal or a Cash App or a Venmo, this is something that always makes me a bit skeptical. Then it came out that after Sarah had chastised Billy the Fridge on his own line, Livestream about profiting off of the Onision investigation, she said this. On the stream, someone asked, oh, are you donating this to any of the victims? Which, I don't want any money. I've yeah. never wanted yeah. money. Like, Mr. Repsion is the only one who's sent me money. Yeah. And yeah. it's one fan. And this made me even more skeptical. So just to be clear, I have no problem with crowdfunding. I have no problem with victims or e-celebrities alike being paid by their supporters. My issue with the situation was its transparency and it placed little seeds of doubt in my mind. And because of this lack of transparency, it's the reason I explored further. By this point, Sarah had answered my DM and added a bit more context to the messages. And this was equally as concerning. Now she's told me that she wasn't aware how much money that they would give her and the rest would be going towards her college tuition. I'm someone who firmly believes that it should be made clear to people what they are donating to and where their money is going. And this continued to make me more suspicious. 
However, I guess in some sense Sarah agreed with me because she issued an apology addressing some of my claim. Unfortunately, she left the original tweet up, which now kind of makes me doubt the apology's sincerity. However, that's neither here nor there. That's really where this situation should have ended. However, the next day I posted these DMs while arguing with Indigo White to prove the point that it was lacking transparency. Then Shiloh took it upon herself to try and get me deplatformed and break Twitter TOS in the process. Shiloh attempted to deplatform me for leaking DMs, which by the way, isn't against any version of Twitter's rules. Doxing, to which she provided no evidence for, and she does this above the hashtag deplatform predators, which in my opinion, clearly tries to paint me as a predator. In case that wasn't clear enough, she followed that tweet up with one saying that I'm a creep, and she added a bunch of screenshots. By doing this, she started a massive targeted harassment wave that forced me to private my account to avoid being false flagged off the service, which could detrimentally impact my channel. Okay, so let's break this down. Like I said previously, leaking DMs is not something that's considered to be a bannable offense by Twitter. However, she followed this up with saying that I'm encouraging the doxing of a 19-year-old girl. First of all, 19 is an adult. She is not a child. Stop looking for the feel bad for me pity points. Second of all, this is slanderous and completely unfounded. It is so unfounded that she was forced to retract it. The entire tweet of evidence the anti-Onision radicals were able to produce was someone else's tweet entirely and me replying to that person, which was out of context approximately two hours before. I debunked this almost immediately. A user called Scarce Goes Hungry shows that there was a Twitter account called Pink Pineapple who replied to Nick, Josh Pescator, and two other people saying, anyone know what city in Michigan she's in? There's also a tweet of Nicholas Diorio responding to Pink Pineapple saying, good find, but this wasn't in response to the previous tweet I just showed, but instead in response to the clip I showed earlier of Sarah saying that she wouldn't accept money from people. Nicholas proved this was the case when he tweeted out, the good find was in reply to the woman who found the clip of Sarah talking about not taking money. If it was part of the other chain, it would be adding way more people than just her. Hashtag stop lying. He then shows more screenshots proving this. So now without a shadow of a doubt, we know that Nicholas was not advocating for the docs of anybody. Before she retracted it, she put out a tweet saying that I apparently run smear campaigns on young girls for clicks and drama. Let me remind you, this entire situation is over a simple question that Sarah could have just ignored if she felt uncomfortable answering it. Also, I'm literally only three years older, so I don't know why you're saying that I like to smear young girls. But notice this tweet doesn't say that I'm a doxer on there. Oh yeah, there's a reason for that. The reason became clear in the next tweet because she knew she had to retract it. But instead of just apologizing and moving on from the situation, what does Shiloh do? She fucking doubles down and says that I still deserve to be reported. Well, unfortunately for her, Twitter disagreed. They sent me a nice email saying that my account didn't violate any of their guidelines and they wouldn't be taking action on my account while simultaneously the tweet tweet she brigaded me with was in fact taken down for targeted harassment. Ironic. But she also says that I was trying to harass Sarah again, which she still has yet to show proof of. The tweets that she did show where she called me a creep earlier are super interesting. Now I'll be the first to admit that I'm an asshole. There's a lot of things you can call Nick. You can call Nick an asshole. You can call him a ball buster. You could even say that he gets a little aggressive when he is sniffing into something. But I'm not wearing that badge of honor here. Not a single fucking one of those tweets were sent directly to Sarah. None of them even tagged Sarah. She cherry picked out of context messages where I was arguing with anti Onision fans and staged them like these were directly sent to Sarah. The first tweet is when I'm explaining the situation that I already stated in this video so far, which I see nothing wrong with, and it's to an anti-O Twitter account that found their way onto my timeline. The second tweet is much of the same thing. The third tweet was sent to Indigo White in the middle of a heated argument, and the fourth tweet was me saying that I'm going to take my original tweets down from under Sarah's post because Shiloh had already started a flagging campaign on another user and I figured my account was a sitting duck. Hardly a vicious harasser of little girls. But do you know who is a harasser? Do you know who is some Someone who's threatening doxing? Shiloh. No, I'm not kidding. While this is all going on at the same time, she decided to jump on Instagram to try to play victim and say that she 
she's risking her mental health by launching a targeted harassment false flagging campaign under the hashtag deplatform predators. She also threatened the fuck out of someone who made an admittedly shitty comment in Sarah's replies. To be fair to all parties here, I think this is an awful tweet and I don't support it at all. Which is why when it happened, people took notice that I was nowhere to be found in the replies under it. That being said, the context of the tweet is strategically missing. The conversation around the tweet from before this was about semesters. Sarah had stated that school was starting soon, which is why she needed money for a laptop. However, it's February. People were talking about how it was weird that school would be starting in March, April, May. Angela said this poorly worded tweet so she could find out when the semesters would start at various schools in the Michigan area. This was the context that was available at the time to both Shiloh and Sarah, but the context that was omitted from the greater audience. While it was admittedly poorly worded and Angela had absolutely no intentions to publish or harass Sarah in any way, I could understand being upset about this. But in response to this, Shiloh publicly launched a targeted harassment campaign to flag her. She stated publicly on her timeline that if Angela didn't stop, Shiloh will pull up in real life, but it doesn't stop there. After Angela blocked Shiloh and went private to avoid harassment, Shiloh got around the block by sending a message through an alt account where she said, I swear to God, I'm already on it on finding where the fuck you live. This is very clearly a threat of doxing and significantly more aggressive than anything she's seen from the people that she's accusing of doxing. She also continued to message her telling Amanda to essentially kill herself for what she did. Normally I'd say an account isn't responsible for what their fans do. However, when you're actively threatening people and intentionally sending targeted harassment campaigns, unfortunately I think I would draw the line there at responsibility. Either a fan or Shiloh herself succeeded in doxing Amanda and they called her sick mother, shared her maiden name and her town, and they distributed pictures of her child. And Sarah tried to call me a dox encourager. She tried to defend herself on Twitter and paint Amanda like she threatened to release Sarah's personal information, but surprisingly, she doesn't have the receipts of that either. Yeah, okay lady, but it doesn't stop there. When she dropped the messages about me, one of them had a tweet attached to it from a person that she was DMing who commented on my credibility. She leaked this DM to her timeline in public, but in private, she distributed it to others without the watermark to try to build some sort of case against me. Now she's done two of the things that she's accused me of, by the way. Projecting much? Anyways, this person's account gets called into question, and now all of a sudden the user Bong King himself is claiming that his information has been leaked as well. What a fucking disaster. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt here, Shiloh, that you didn't give me, and say that I haven't seen a DM where you sent this guy's city to people, so I'm not just gonna pretend this exists and create a flagging campaign on a little power trip like you would. After being called a doxer, Shiloh tweeted maybe the most unself-aware tweet that she could have possibly made, where she said that being falsely accused of being a doxer made her feel like she had a target on her back, which is insanely funny given what she was doing to me. I thought that's where the story would have ended. However, Bong King did just send me another message that I didn't initially believe was real. Apparently at the time of scripting this last night, Shiloh also reached out to him. I had my doubts, but he managed to show me two examples to verify that they're real. One being where he navigates to the page and scrolls, and the other being where he clicks onto her account. These fucking messages, dude, they are crazy. In these messages, Shiloh accuses Bong King of being a mini Onision, which would literally make him, by her own definition, a sexual predator. Shiloh states that she has family in his hometown, which is a direct threat to his safety, and she says that Bong King is lucky that her dad's dead. This woman is absolutely unhinged. Maybe in your mind you can defend her for the situation with Amanda, but I don't think Bong King posed any kind of a threat, and Shiloh resulted to acting like a complete unhinged degenerate. And that brings me back to my original point. I'm really fucking skeptical about how you girls carry yourselves. Admittedly more so Shiloh now. I asked a few questions and literally every party involved had a mental breakdown. I'll give credit to Sarah for a moment. She just blocked me, which is a completely normal response to putting out her DMs and I can't be mad at that. But Shiloh, when I make a claim about how there could be some kind of fame and money motivation and you have the audacity to try to cleanse me from the website, I'm gonna be pretty fucking skeptical. When you call my questions harassment on your public social media profiles, which I am well within my rights to ask, I'm gonna be 
fucking skeptical. When you throw up your own Venmo link to profit off the traffic of your targeted harassment campaign against me, I'm gonna be fucking skeptical. When you launched a GoFundMe campaign to fund a laptop that Sarah had already fucking claimed she got the money for through Venmo, so you're funding it a second time, I'm gonna be fucking skeptical. And you, the audience member? That's the best part. You don't have to agree with my opinions about the two girls to see that what Shiloh has done to me is fucking unacceptable. I'm the kind of person that likes to vet both sides of a situation. And if one side calls questions harassment, it's natural for me to question why they're doing that. If I insinuate a theory that the Onision investigation could potentially be artificially extended for monetary reasons, and you send an army of 35,000 people to wipe me off the website, I take that as an insecure individual trying to cover something up. If you don't agree with that statement, that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but I've watched Andy Signor's life get ruined for essentially Twitter followers, so I'm inclined to explore every avenue in a situation like this. To summarize, Shiloh accused me of leaking DMs, and then she literally went and leaked DMs. Shiloh accused me of doxing, and then had to backtrack, but it turns out that she was the one doxing and threatening people from her alt account. Shiloh accused me of harassment, and fortunately for her, Twitter support disagreed. However, to add insult to injury, they found her her tweet violated their TOS on targeted harassment. Shiloh attempted to deplatform me under hashtag deplatform predators and doubled down by calling me a creep, which absolutely could impact my real life and my job. Since then, she has called Bong King a predator in his private DMs by calling him a mini Onision. Shiloh made a half-assed apology, but indicated even after her tweet was taken down for targeted harassment that I still deserve to be reported. And this was all over a few simple questions. If I wasn't skeptical before, well I certainly am now. In the end, by slandering my name and epically failing at deplatforming me, she did succeed in one department. The way she was able to effortlessly lie and brigade me with 35,000 people and double down when she was caught lying time after time tells me this woman's credibility should be questioned. I personally don't believe a word the woman says now if it doesn't come with a receipt attached to it. This situation has introduced a layer of doubt that I don't think she could have afforded to have in her current position. It doesn't help that a vocal minority of the anti-Onision movement supporters are absolutely fucking insane. If you don't blindly support them, they'll harass you, they'll call you a Greg Alt, they'll flag you, and they'll try to brand you as a sexual predator like they tried to do to Billy the Fridge a few weeks ago. And I'm a bit disappointed because until now, I thought it was just the crazy fans. Apparently, that's how Shiloh plans to operate her influential social media platform as well. And if that's what you want to do, be my guest. I'm not going to stop you from making your own cause a complete shit show. Oh, and speaking of shit show, I'm going to link John Swan's video in the description, but he outlines exactly how unlikely it is that we'll see an Onision conviction of the things that he's been accused of doing. I'm sure watching Shiloh brigade a man who asked a simple question and tried to smear him won't help that already disappointing reality. But don't take my word for it. My side of this story is done. I wouldn't touch this investigation with a 10-foot pole, and this seems to be the case for a lot of people, well, considering your credibility just took a nosedive in the commentary community that has been giving you free exposure for what feels like years. Good luck. <laughs>